We have some information that you may need to avoid being the victim of a scam because con artists are using a technology called caller ID spoofing. And this tech allows the scammer to change the number that appears on your phone. And joining me now is our tech expert, Dave Hatter, on how you can avoid falling for these scams. Uh, uh, Dave, good morning, first of all. And uh, secondly, uh, explain for our viewers exactly what caller ID spoofing is. Yeah, thanks for having me, John. Good morning to you and all your viewers as well. Caller ID spoofing basically boils down to it's really fairly easy for someone to make a call that looks like it came from another number. Uh, the bad guys can find services on the internet where they can do this. It's, it's fairly simple. So anytime you get a phone call, you really should assume, particularly if it's an unsolicited call, that that number might not be the actual number the call is coming from. Okay, you see this call, it's your area code, generally speaking, and you think it may be familiar, you answer it. Uh, typically, what do these scammers try to do? So in, in this most recent scam, and it's, it's pretty dangerous actually, what they'll do is they'll buy credit card information that's been hacked or stolen uh, online. These are often called CVVs. They'll have a lot of information about someone in it, a lot of information they can use to pretend they're you. They'll try to get information from your bank using this. So for example, if the bank has your phone number on file, they may give up certain information to the scammer. Then the scammer calls you pretending to be your bank. So they're using this caller ID spoofing in two directions. One to spoof your bank, two to spoof you. They might say, hey John, it looks like there's fraudulent activity on your account. Uh, can you confirm this information? So you talk to these folks, they say, oh, well, we're gonna send you a new card, John. We need your security word or your password or something like that. And literally at the same time, they'll have another person on the phone with your bank using your spoof number. You give up that information, now they have access to your bank account. Yeah, so even It's pretty if devious. Yeah, so even if your radar is up about these, uh, these kinds of calls, these unsolicited calls that you may get, they have just enough personal information on you to make you think, hmm, this could be real. Uh, that, that's exactly right, John. And I mean, it could be a call that pretends to be from the IRS about your taxes or a stimulus payment. It's not necessarily banks. You know, a lot of information, unfortunately, has been leaked about people. The bad guys get a hold of this and they use this caller ID spoofing, just like they might send you a spoofed email and phishing or a spoofed text to have, as you stated, just enough information to trick you into believing it's a legitimate call. Yeah, and they're not the only ones that use this call ID spoofing. I know that a lot of uh, uh, people trying to sell you insurance or whatever the case may be, they, they do something mm -hmm. similar to make the phone number look at, like it's coming from your area code. Yep, yep, absolutely. All right. So, so really the best thing you can do is never take an unsolicited call. And if you do get a call that purports to be from a bank or IRS or whatever, hang up, look up the number, call them back on your own. Yeah, my, my philosophy about that is if it's that important, they'll leave a voicemail. There you go. I totally agree. <laughs> there you go. All right, Dave Hatter, thank you so much. Happening today. Thanks, John. Have a good day. You too.